Hey Kaijudo fans, this is Carl Reddish, and I'm here with David Woodward, who made top eight of the Bedford KMC using a very interesting list. Um, you've been working on this for a while. I know you ran it at ARG, you made some tweaks, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I know that Jason Marklin also kind of piloted a, a similar copy to this. I have that on, on film for you guys. Check that out in the playlist. Now, this he is actually ran this kind of build in Louisiana too and he made that's ninth. right yeah yeah he makes ninth a lot actually <laughs> shout out to, to Jason his ninth place is like three of them I used uh, to do that in dual masters now now you have my sympathies on how much it sucks I'm telling you I'm telling you um, how many cards is this this is 46 cards 46 cards okay and this is the backbone is essentially cyber lords and just a little bit of control, is that right? Yes, it's uh, designed to kind of be a tempo-ish thing where I can go rushing in very early on if I happen to get it, or I can drag it out in the later game and still be okay. Okay, let's go card by card. Uh, Cyber Sprite? Great Evo uh, bait for... Yeah, pretty much it's, it's Evo bait, and if I'm playing Rush, it gives me the one drop blocker. Okay. Um, exactly. As a whole, if I'm playing anything that's not Rush, he goes straight into mana, though. Okay. So. Cyber Scam. Cyber Scam is highly overrated. Really? Yeah. Uh, it may just be because I'm un naturally unlucky, so I generally end up drawing Cyber Scams in pairs. Okay. Or they just stop playing spells entirely once the scam comes down. Okay. Um, the biggest thing I found for him is most time he's useful is when I can go two scamp. I go basically go one sprite, two scamp, three neuron, or maybe three trader, then three neuron, then four neuron. Uh, because then I can start swinging with neuron, and I've got to use a spell to get rid of him. And at that point, I'm going to get something out with scamp. Okay. The other time he's sort of useful is if they're basically forced to play spells, and turn six, I can go general Finbar. Uh, but other than that, that rarely ever happens. And the turn two scamp, turn three or four neuron, with leaving scamp out there, that also rarely ever happens. So. And you've got a, another two drop, the Cyber Trader, card yes. filtering. So you got five two drops to, to help against Rush, to help find the, the, the bait for for uh, Emperor Neuron, stuff like that. Uh, uh, Cyber Trader is also very good later on in games because the part of the idea of the deck is to draw every time you attack. Yeah. Or at least to have some, some sort of benefit to attacking, so I'm never dumping myself down in terms of advantage. So even later game, you can drop Cyber Trader, card filter. throw something away, yep. and hopefully fish up that the good card you need. Yeah. Uh, Aqua Seneschal, old school, attacks, draws a card, always good. Sort of. I've, I found with Lemon and Strider, and then how big all aggression cards are now, he's not that useful. Okay. Generally, the only time I drop him is if I've got Rasulka or Veil Vortex lined up. To go um, turn three, turn to four. To go three, four. But even yeah. then... If they drop Keeper of Laws, that's out. So I have to assume that's going to come down, and all I can do is result that. How often was Emperor Neuron just the key card in, in the final... They've got no shields, you just need him to get through because he's unblockable. I don't think it was today. Uh, I did beat Jason with it, but I also had like triple bounce in my hand. I think yeah. I had like a Rasulka and a Veil Vortex and something else. Yeah. Uh, so it didn't matter that it was an Iran. Yeah. At ARG, what I ran was just green blue. There was no darkness in it at the time. And there were games where he was effective as, hey, I've got it. If you watch the game against Joe Bass, game one I win because I have Neuron and he's a block with the shields. Okay. Now, Rasulka bounces any creature, yours yeah. or theirs. Always a great card. Trench yeah. Hunter. Although, it's, it actually relevant. only just got into the deck Thursday. Really? Prior, prior to that, it wasn't in there because I found other turn four plays more effective. Mm -hmm. um, but when it came down to it, that extra bounce is really useful, primarily because it's central. Yeah, most people are going to think you're jamming three in there anyway, so it's, it's yeah, cool to do that. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. Uh, Veil Vortex. It's, it's standard blue solid, shield blast. Solid color. Solid doesn't go into your mana tapped. Always a good shield blast. Good times. General Finbar. Everybody's running Finbars right now. They're so good. The staple of any aggression deck that has any blue in it. You always yeah. run through. Simple as that. Yeah. Draws your cards. Bounces creatures. It's good times. It, it combos off very well with Neuron, Senshal if he's actually out, and then Lore Strikes. And I'm swinging for two every time. Two Milporos. 
People have this in their trade binder. They can pull them back out now. Yes, uh, <laughs> I, honestly, he's very good. Um, he's, he's, as a seven drop, he's kind of clunky. Yes. But the big thing is, especially if we're slowly kind of trading down, trying, struggling to get that advantage, if you can mill Poro a lemon or a strider, or if you get really lucky and you can mill Poro an evolution, I was just about to say it's, that. it's amazing because you shut them down for one to two turns. Mm -hmm. It's just phenomenal. Um, like I said, his seven drop, he's a little clunky. Mm -hmm. It worked a lot better when I ran Reaper so on the deck before. Uh, which that got dropped because of Keeper of Laws, ultimately. Yeah, you're, you're giving um, them a card just the same. Yeah, you know? it, it wasn't worth it. Uh, but he is very effective. Um, even, honestly, even using him on Lyra is amazing. And I've done that several times where they have basically just Lyra out. You just you summon Moporo, they're going to summon Lyra again anyways. Or even Andromeda. Quite frankly, if I'm swiddling away at shields, Mill Poro, the Andromeda, it locks them down from drawing anything else unique, and they're basically going to be forced to play the Andromeda anyways yeah. if you're whittling things down. So it works very nicely. The only reason he's not at three is because I tend to draw some of the higher costs all at once. Um, and he just really doesn't fit anymore. At 46, it still feels kind no, of. No, I think, I think your, your combination of two ofs and, and stuff is great. And, and example being Dreadnought. It's huge, double breaks, draws two cards, protects your guys, yeah. allows well, for cool it's trades. It's a huge cost at eight, but at 6,000, it's really not that big. True. I mean, anything else that's six or higher either ties or beats him outright. Uh, power wise. Trades with Lyra. <laughs> yeah, he does trade with Lyra. Um, it makes him a little lackluster. But he's actually a very good card. I like him. If I built a control build, he'd go in there. Kind of wish he was a Cyberlord. Yeah, being a Cyber Complex kind of weird. Yeah. But I highly doubt there would be often times where I go, okay, eight, Finbar's Dreadnought, three more, Emperor Neuron, swing. Yeah. Toxic Fog. Um, great against Mono Light, great against No, Rush. not great against Mono Light. It's, uh, I, found, I found it to be very... Kill Cyber Scamps. It's Kill Cyber Scamps. I did that earlier. Um, where I played a Bone Blitz and bait out a Scamp. He didn't end up having it, so he had just two out, and then I talked to Fog to clear them. Yeah. Um, against Dragons, I didn't have the Darkness mana, but if I did, I would have Toxic Fog, swept his birds, and been able to start coming back. Yeah. Uh, and against Mega Bugs, this was Clutch. Yes, that I can see. So, uh, Terror Pits gets rid of big creatures. Yeah. And then the only reason it's at two is because I find I don't hard cast it a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, there's not really room to go for three. And quite frankly, two just worked. No. So I went. I've seen a lot of people go on two, two pits, two bone blades. Your opponent still thinks you're at three. Old school thinking, you know, stuff like that. No. Uh, Bloom Warden. I think is a great blocker. Doesn't get enough play. Uh, it dies, goes to mana. You know, stuff like that. I think it's a great blocker. Um, also unlocks nature and water. Same with Lore Strider. Yes. Uh, draws a card. Can be evolved into Emperor Neuron. Yeah, I generally don't evolve into Neuron because you're already drawing when you attack anyways. Yeah. And at that point, you lose the the walk to spirits. True. He's very nice though because you can play him. He's actually a big body. He actually gets over Keeper of Laws, which you'll notice if you True. look at this, that's a big problem. His Keeper of Laws just runs over everything. Um, so being the 4,000 actually makes him fairly relevant. And if he's out there, they'll probably end up killing him somehow because they don't want me to draw every attack. And in that point, I accelerate. So works out nicely. Absolutely. I love this guy. Um, Crystallize. Why that over Grip of Despair? Two reasons. One, I don't have enough green in here to, if I drop it. At that point, exactly. I've got three Bloom Warden, three Loris Rider, two Octuska, and two Kivu. Um, game in top eight, I had no green until like turn six. Yeah. So I need the extra source of green. The flip side to it is, or the, the other reason to run it, is I crystallize my own creatures on, yeah. on occasion. Not Absolutely. often, uh, but on occasion. At that point, I can also accelerate. I mm -hmm. probably don't want to grip myself. That's not a good move to go. <laughs> Uh, absolute best case scenario would be to do something like crystallize onto Rasolka, drop something else to accelerate, and then resummon Rasolka right away. Got it. So I could do that ten tentatively with eight mana if I have a, a mono sieve card in my hand. Yeah. Uh, Octuska draws your card, gets you a mana. Why this over Skak? Kind of the same situations. Just to draw a card. I mean, I yeah. found. Generally, if I'm since I'm picking away at shields, they're probably gonna have a huge chain anyways. Skak is not gonna be helpful. And then there's always the occasional slumbering titan that'll drop down if you skak. I understand. You I'm never sure. know. Um, but the other thing is he's a cyberlord. Skak is not. 
Yeah. Oh, this is a yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I, I, there have been a well, that makes perfect go, sense. Eight yeah. mana, summon Octesca, draw a card, That's right. get a mono card into mana, and then you follow them into Neuron right away. That's sweet. Um, this guy's just fun. I, saw, I was watching you play some, and then it, it's funny, I saw Jason messing with his mana, trying to figure out what he had, telegraphed that he had a Kivu. You know what I mean? It's just interesting that, that we're going to get, hopefully we get more and more cards that, that interact with the mana. Unfortunately, I didn't use him too much today, except no. as a big body. Yeah. Um, 7,000 double breaker. Yeah, se big 7,000 double breaker. The big thing just being 7,000, he'll get over Lyra, he'll get over Herald, he gets over Minor Beetle Prime and stuff. Trade with Valerian. It didn't happen to face Mono Yellow, but this is a nice thing too, I mean, if he actually gets out. Um, there have been many times in prior games, like casual or casual tournaments, where I play him and I get the school scourge back, so the next turn I can go for the game. Yeah. So. Speaking of that guy, you run three of him. You yes. did an ARG. You realized that it needs to be in here. Yeah. You included it. How good was it for you? Amazing. Um, leading up to ARG and then immediately afterwards, I was trying to remember what mono blue card it is that makes all your guys unblockable. Uh, it turns out there is no such card in Kaijudo at the moment. Yeah. But School of Scourge basically does the same thing. Yeah. And if I have General Finbar or Lore Strider or especially General Finbar, but with Lore Strider or Aqua Sinshaw or Emperor Neuron out, when I play Scourge and I lose my hand, I don't really care because I'm just going to load back up again. Yeah. Uh, best case scenario is I've got like 12, 13 mana when I Scourge. I load up my hand just a little bit. So I've got a little bit of cards that have broken just a couple shields. They'll make a play. My turn, I'll bounce Scourge and immediately resummon. And then whittle away some more shields. Yep. Uh, I don't think I did that today, but I came close to doing it once. Uh, and I've done it before at our locals, and it's amazingly effective. If you do that and you have General Finbar out, you effectively win the game. Absolutely. I was really hoping that you and Jason would both get in a top eight with this, but you came yeah, down to a bubble it, match. So it was, but, it was super disappointing when we ended up playing each other. Yeah. The, at the last moment there. Bye. Well, congratulations. Um, Thank you. If you guys like it, leave a, leave a, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and uh, hopefully we'll see you at the next one.